Familiar faces in different places. Forget cables, switch to Frontier. The Fios Triple Play brings dedicated 100% fiber optics to your home. Fios TV, 15 by 5 internet and digital phone for $119.99 per month with two-year price protection plan on qualifying service. FrontierPacificNW.com. I got him to laugh at that one, even you a little bit. Yes, he's chuckling. Uh, the Mariner lineup is what we're talking about. And there was big news uh, today, before the game today, that Jesus Montero, off his 4-for-4 four four performance the other night, went in his cleanup. It's not the first time he's done it, but this kind of feels like a move to clean up. Because the guy who had been batting cleanup stays in the lineup, Justin Smoke, and moves down to number 7. What kind of caught me, though, Bob, and, and actually this is a guy we talked to, the podcast is up, you can take a look at it, our conversation with Michael Saunders today, mm -hmm. who's batting 8th. When are we going to move him up in the lineup a little bit? Yeah, he's batting eighth, as you said, and he's a guy who's tied for the team lead so far in home runs. He's got four. I think he's one RBI behind Jesus Montero, who's got 13. He's got 12. Not hitting for great average yet, but he's, he's been producing. He's looked more comfortable, the bunt aside, uh, in the ninth inning the other night. But, I mean, he, he goes first pitch, home run last night, mm -hmm. accounting for the only run that they had. And they haven't had a, a base hit with runners in scoring position since he hit his grand slam. 0 for 30 going into the game tonight. But he's a guy who just seems like he's finding his groove at the plate. He's, he's always had that nice swing, and he talked about he did things in the offseason he'd never done before and just trying to change. You yeah. know? He said there was kind of a desperation to it, that there was kind of a feeling of even though he's only 25 years old, He's had a lot of chances, and, yeah, and he was and, running out of them. And he even said, I got tired of things being handed to me. I want to, you know, I just had to go out there and, and, and just get it done, and that's what he's starting to do. So, you know, if he's going to continue to produce, still early, even though some guys on the team don't like to say that, it, maybe you see him, you put him up closer there instead of eighth, seventh. Yeah. Maybe he should be a fifth guy, hitting fifth at least at this point of smoke. And I, I don't think this is a one-game proposition with Smoke. I would Not think, until he turns it around. Yeah, I would think he's he's down there. He's going to, you know, they'll bring him in and out of first base. But he's going to be a guy you want to keep. I think that's a good move. You bring him down seventh, eighth even, and let him find himself. Because right now he's hitting 190. He's mm -hmm. absolutely scuffling, and he looks lost at the plate. Bump Saunders up. I mean, you, you don't have enough run producers on this team. You might as well get them up there where they might be able to get something done with Ackley and, and Ichiro at the top of the lineup in front of them, get Montero and, and Saunders getting something done up there. Uh, it's, it's, what's, what's kind of exciting about it is, uh, and he brings it up, if you listen to the podcast, he talks immediately at the, at the start of it about Franklin Gutierrez and how he got the opportunity and what Goody can do and everything like that. But, but really what it's looking like with the concerns you have with Gutierrez, now this is two years of this, Michael Saunders is now beginning to look like an answer in center field as opposed to a guy who was just a caretaker there or, or really not a, not a long-term solution. There's a ways to go still, and, sure. and, and everyone's conceding that. But, but that's what I think anyway, more so than the other young outfielders and who we've heard of. And Mike Karp, obviously, is just getting his chance to come back and play now after his 270 season with 12 homers last year. Uh, but but you know, even with those other guys out there, Casper Wells, I mean, Saunders looks like the guy who's, who's the closest to me and really does, I think, what I'm coming out of this with. He looks like he could be the answer in center field. Well, and he's, yeah, he's definitely eliminated that feeling of urgency like you got to get a goody back boy they really need him back how's he doing you really feel like let him take his time yeah. he's fine because as we've talked about before defensively there's not a big gap between the two no goody he's a great better. defensive player goody is a great center fielder when he's healthy he's one of the best in the game Michael Saunders is a very good center fielder. You're not missing much. You're not. He's not a liability by any stretch. So the gap between those two in the in the defensive side of things not big enough to warrant feeling that urgency. And definitely at the plate, Gutierrez is not an offensive force. Never has been. So you're not in a hurry. You don't feel that sense of we got to get him in there. I hope he's healthy soon. And I think that's the biggest attribute for for Saunders so far this year is you don't have that feeling. There haven't been a lot of them, but he's definitely been one of the bright spots.